All right, so let me go over it. Now, I hope you guys are not squeamish. Cause we're gonna, we're gonna do a bit of studying. All right. I feel nothing. All right, that's good. I have a like study canvas here. All right, here we are. So today's uh, we're gonna have something that everyone can profit from in some way or another. Uh, hand and and feet. There we go. A very, very nice topic. Now, everyone has a different approach. Every pro has a different approach on how to do it. I'm just gonna show my way how I do this sort of thing. I really wanna draw horror stuff, but my guts say no. Oh, I mean, you don't have to. Go with the flow, you know? See what works for you. I'm still practicing. That's completely fine. Practice is very important and fundamentals. Do learn the fundamentals. I can't press this hard enough. Um, if you if you don't do the fundamentals, then um, now you can still become a professional without knowing the fundamentals by just becoming part of the industry in one way or another, right? You just have to have a style that's recognizable and just hit a mark. But when you want to do like a certain type of realism or structure to it, it's good to know the fundamentals. Good as I see is the artist be in being deranged. Oh, I just got here, there's medieval music. Ah, it's more piratey music, but sure. Circle hand gang. I mean, it's not wrong, right? I mean, I drew it in the, uh, oop, in the starting soon here. Circle hand. There's nothing wrong with doing such a thing. If you're drawing hands and legs. Okay, so. Let's let's look at some creepy stuff first before we jump into actually drawing them. It's always good to just have an understanding how the skeleton works. Um, no, that's not it. Here. So this is a hand with its skeleton. It's a medical study someone did. Medical, medical drawing. Um, we're not gonna look at any real um, cut open people here. Of course not. It's Twitch. Um, so here you can see how the bones work, right? It's very important to know the basics here and where the bones go. Now, the funniest part is if you know the bone structure, you also know where certain bumps go on your body. Because then you can see uh, these parts are usually a bit curved outwards. So there's like a lump here sort of thing, right? You can make this more stylized and more extreme depending on your art style. But you can clearly see, ah, it goes kind of like that. And now I made it very extreme just to show it off a bit harder. But if you ball your fist together, like um, like this sort of thing, right? You can right here see where the bones connect. Little bumps, usually. Especially when you stretch it like that. We need blood, flesh and meat. <laughs> like, I can't draw such a thing, but I feel like I can only post on Twitter. I don't know how Twitch feels about it. Maybe if it's very stylized. That is when they asked to draw a single mechanical drawing as an artist tries to draw mechs, they will spontaneously combust. Uh, no, I feel like it has to do with deconstruction again. Um, mechanical parts aren't that hard. You just know, need to know some structures of like actual built mechanics. Not even that much. You can also do fantasy mechanics where it's just a bunch of gears for no reason. Um, but it will look better if you know some structure there. By the way, you're cool with me looking while I'm practicing gore? Sure, I don't, I don't mind. Um, okay, anyways, back to the structuring. So by that, you can already get some kind of shape language going when you draw a hand, because you know where to put the bumps. Know where to put the little bumps. Um, there's also a very important slash interesting thing. Uh, using your title recommendations. Okay. Um, so there's like this thing down here. 
where this bump of the bone, because each bone is basically structured like the, uh, kind of like a cartoon bone. They are thick on the sides and thin in the middle. That's how a bone works usually. Now we have the little small bones here that are like segmented, but you don't really see those. You just sort of see the big ball, right? Now the funniest thing is uh, that there are segments embedded right here. So if you um, if you're in an accident or push your hand in the wrong way, you can actually dislocate the inner hand bones, which is like really freaky. Uh, but this can happen and it results in a really fucked up hand. Medical issues, yay. <laughs> Very much like the cartoony bones. Yes, exactly. So if you've ever seen a cartoony bone, that's where it comes from. Because every bone in the body works kind of like that. Thick on the sides, thin in the middle. Um, but you can see because of that thickness, you get a bump right here. If you, um, if you feel on your bones right now, right, you have this bump. Like, you can basically x-ray by just feeling up your hand, your own hand. You can feel all of these bones, which is really freaky because at some points I've started to, like, just look at a hand and know exactly where which bone lies, which is, it's not hard hard, but, like, it's a thing you just notice less if you don't know about it or don't really think about it, right? So if you look at your own hands and, like, move your uh, knuckles, right? It, uh, you will see glimpses of, like, your own bone shining through through your skin. Every time you, like, uh, uh, ball up your fist, basically, like that, you'll see those hints. Um, which, that's important for flexibility, of course, but it does freak me out <laughs> at times. That's freaky? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said, you know? Um, because the hands are so thinly skinned. Uh, which is important because all the nerves are there to know what's going on. Like, to feel textures and stuff like that. Um, alright. Let's move on to a more freaky part. Which is the feet. Because the feet are just hands that got compressed and adjusted. Which, the feet have these hidden parts. As well as more hidden parts. So they took these parts in the front here, these parts in the front here, and they got pushed back inside to give more of a surface area for people to stand on, right? This is evolution at its finest. Um, it also has the double bones as here in the arm. You can see like two bones going further. This is also reflected in, in the leg bone. And it's really important not to uh, break the fibula, by the way. It's a very uh, sort of like fragile situation. Because then you can't turn your uh, foot anymore. Um, that's uh, These two bones are important to turn parts of your body. This as well. Because they sort of rotate with each other. The moment it's like, like one is like turned, you know? It's, it's, like a, it's like a double helix sort of situation. I already draw feet, I only draw them with shoes. Um, that's completely fine. I think most people are probably fine not drawing feet. But if it ever comes to it, you know, it's good to know how to do it. And as well, it is so close to a hand, right? You know that punching stuff is good for you. If you punch, your hand bones will receive some damage that will need to regenerate, ma making them a little bit stronger. So making impact sports would help you to gain bigger bones density, like sp uh, sprint, running, or karate, or martial arts. That is true. That is completely true. Rose had a very good point. I will add one thing though. If a person is still young, like, I don't know, um, let's say they're nine years old, right? A young person, uh, wait, there we go, does impact sports they actually have a less likeliness to grow their quote-unquote full potential if they want to grow. If they, um, I don't know, let's put them at 18. I don't know if they stop growing at 18, I, I'm not sure about that. But the thing is, if they, um, if they uh, want to grow, these, um, these impact sports can actually fill in the bones too early. Because there's like microscopic cracks in the bones while doing impact sports. And they heal up, right? Like these little cracks. Um, and because of that, they harden way, like, sooner. 
and there's a potential for it to be very unhealthy. So it's better to start true impact sports when the person is a bit older. If they're younger, that's not as healthy due to the, um, you know, the body stop stopping certain bones from growing. But yeah, that's that's how it was explained to me back then because I, w I was a shorty short short and I'm still a shorty short short. N nothing has changed. Yeah, that's, that's me. I I'm still as small as I was when I was 16 years old or younger. I think I, either 14 years old or 16 years old, I stopped growing. I can't quite tell. Um, but yeah, we're also short. Damn. Short gang, short gang. <laughs> Alright. Okay, let's go back to the um to the bones here. So yeah, you can see the bump also still applies when it comes to the feet. The bump here on the side. Because again, bones are bigger at one side. Um so here the bump as well applies. There's just something weird I'm like confused about right now in this illustration because the bump is on the other side. I guess this bump isn't drawn in, but there's like a bump here. Oh, thank you for the follow. Visanchio. Welcome. Welcome to the crew, R. <laughs> also, let's uh, mention that stretcher is measured by several factors. Uh, what did you do to stay like that? Any sport? Well, I did ballet and uh, jujitsu when I was young. Uh, I don't think it was because of that. I think generally my jeans were just grabbed from the smallest uh, person, I guess. Uh, the lottery of jeans was just like that. Um, okay, so now that we have all of this, let's simplify these shapes. Let me, let me turn these off. Also, is it here? No, it's not there. Let's move this away and have this. Okay, so how I do it with at least hands, it's more of a case-by-case -case scenario. I usually do like the big shape, which is this is the most simplified I can do. This is how I do a hand. I have the pinky out and the thumb out and the rest is just sort of one big blob. And then I sort of do sort of a Lego hand shape, whatever I'm doing hand wise. And then I go in and figure out how to do the other parts of the hand. This is a very fluent process. Oh, thank you, Kalim. Kalim, there we go. Um, how oh, this could be actually useful for me. I'm gonna take notes. Yeah, it's very easy if you put it down like that um, to actually get some, you know, interesting shapes. Because to be honest, I don't think a hand has to be always the same pose. That's what like irks me a lot when there's like one pose and always just one pose, which a lot of artists do and I don't fault them for that. It's just sort of my own personal pet peeve, I guess. So I want them to be different each time. Of course, having a good situation and story going on can help adjust what type of hand pose you need. For example, there's a person that is um, about to swing a sword, right? So you have the hands in this sort of position and they're like leaning a bit because they're like, I don't know, like charging or something, right? So they have like a sword and so they're holding the sword. So you can have a really nice pose of them like holding the sword, for example, right? So it's like, oh, and then you can have either the hand on, on the sword as well, the other one. So they're like about to swing, a lot of energy coming from here, a lot of motion. So I feel like that's really interesting to have the hands just doing something. Or if it's just a general pose, like, I don't know, person is kind of leaning. And I'll then like give the person like a phone, right? And then like one hand is like not in the pocket completely, but like right outside of the pocket, right? Where it's like the thumb is only in it, so sort of leaning, sort of cool, cool person vibes, right? Like I, I like that sort of thing. Like give it character, give the hand character, right? That's the big thing I enjoy. Um, but yeah, then we have like the general shape that I already showed. Now, if you have that general shape, you can detail it out. So we have, I don't know, normal hand number, I don't know, just sort of a waving thing. Um, and then you detail it out and you go in, add some lines, maybe separate them a tiny bit if you feel like it, you know. And then usually at this point, when I already have the pose down, I get a general hand reference. 
right? Something uh, like a photo. Uh, let me get... Let me just get any random image of my hand. Uh, this one looks okay. Hello, Rocket Plays. Welcome. Hope you're having a good day. Okay, so this is one I just grabbed off of Google. Doesn't matter. Um, we have a hand right here. Doesn't have to have the exact pose. And then it go in... Fear, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. Alright, so... You can see that they're like kind of like square-ish. And I like to stylize it that way. And remember how the bones are structured? So there's always this little curve with the bump and then curves down again. You have to just kind of remember that part. Another thing you can do in the sketch phase is just segment it. So you know where to put the bumps. And you can see that they're all different heights. So you can sort of uh, concentrate. These two are kind of similar. But then this one spaces out a tiny bit more. And this one spaces out a tiny bit less because they're like smaller. With the thumb, remember the skeleton? It has a bone here, bone here, and the bone is inside, right? So only about two digits. Here, you can see here, here, here. Only about two digits are actually visible outside. So that way you can adjust that as needed. So this is like this and this segment sort of thing. I mean, let me be, be more specific. This segment. I mean, this segment you don't really see, but you line it. This line, if you ever see this line, this indicates the um, the thumb continuing, right? And then we have these over here, which are just folding lines, really. They're the folding of the of the fingers, of the digits. Because they continue on here into the into the flesh. And here's, uh, that's why this is so like flat. And then we have the folding lines, you see? Um, so we go in. Let me, let me do this a bit better. We go in, we make the bump sort of thing. Go in, bump. You don't have to make it extreme, because again, it's just small bumps. And you go out, and then you do the same process all over. Also, remember, there are, down here, there's a bit of skin. There's a bit of skin, like, almost like a fish person, I guess. They're usually extremized or made more extreme on, like, fantasy creatures, like a kappa, for example, if you've ever seen one illustrated merfolk like this fish person yeah there's a lot of illustrations of uh sort of fish people that have like water shovel i don't even know how to call that it's not gills um they have fit fins between their fingers now let me fix that let me adjust that as well there we go and don't stress about the proportions being a tiny bit off you can always adjust it afterwards. Also, big point of uh, if you do realistic or more realistic hands. Oh, the webbing. Yes, exactly the webbing. Um, give it enough space here. This part right here. Give that part enough space if you're doing more realistic hands. So I'm going to adjust the finger. I'm not too confident on that pose. There we go. All right. Another thing. Just to indicate more of that separation. Just to do this sort of thing where it's uh, separated here. Yeah. But this is like a realistic portrayal. Usually I don't go that much into detail. Because it's unnecessary. I feel like a lot of people already get what's going on. Without this sort of more realistic portrayal of things. Uh, thumb is a bit small now. There we go. So that's how that's how basic hand structure works. So uh, oh, the rock climbers also have bigger fingers thanks to their hand tenders being more developed. Exactly. Depending on uh, the muscles surrounding it, it changes quite a bit. So there is different ways to uh, finish up uh, a hand shape wise. You can go with the sort of standard like that, realistic can go more anime. Anime hands tend to be less uh, realistic with the bumps, so they are more simplified. Yeah. So they, uh, you know, simplify it way more. I think they're also longer. I don't know, I tend to be more cartoony with my hands. They're sharper and longer, almost a bit like claws at times. I'm not too used to them yet. I need quite a few references to nail down a certain style of hand when it comes to that. Um, also, there is nothing wrong with just drawing a sort of hand-like shape and just using that. The classic sort of Lego shape hand. Oh, Parrot! Yo, what's up? 
this sort of thing. Like, if if they if the viewer knows, especially for comics, what is going on, that's good enough. If there's like a person saying, "Oh, this is a small uh, grape. This is a small grape. Look at this small grape, right?" It's completely fine to do just that sort of thing. People will understand what is going on here. It's a dude looking at a small grape, right? Um, you don't have to, if you're not going for some kind of high arts or like very manga, manhwa-esque thing, that's fine too. No one has to know everything to be a successful artist. And there's a lot of successful artists that don't know a lot of things. They just know one thing particularly well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like this, this, this person right here, right? So they're like, they're like up there on the pedestal, right? And that, that's you down here. And you're like, they're so cool. I want to be like them. So cool. But this person only knows like, uh, I don't know, a few things, like 10, 10 things really well. Like they might be a good artist, but they don't know how to color, right? Like a good, like line artist, right? Um, or they might have worked on something cool, but they only did like the CGs, but don't know how to actually like do concepts, you know? It's good if they know both, but there's a lot of people that are like that, which is important because you still, they still know what they're doing, right? And that's very important, of course, especially in the industry. Heck, I, I think most people that are in the industry don't even know how to cook like food correctly. I don't know, they don't wash their rice or something. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. As long as they know what to do. All right. Let me um. Let me go back. Okay. Now we have kind of uh went through the whole hands thing, right? Different different types of hands for different types of people, different types of mediums, right? There's also the uh sort of classic Cartoon Network thing that's going on with the sausages, where they sort of have these types of hands, this sort of thing. Which, to be honest, because it is cartoon, it isn't anything fancy anime like. I think that's fine too. If someone just has a hand like that or a hand like th this one, right? Completely uh, breaking up the structure. As long as you know what's going on, I think it's fine. I know how to boil water. That That's good. You can make a lot of things with boiled water. And they also uh, merge the nail into the hand, which feels cursed sometimes. Oh yeah, animes do that a lot of times. Um, which anime is all about uh, drawing. Like knowing basics, drawing really well those basics, like this, this sort of thing with the, with the nail. They do this thing. That's a, that's a creepy long finger. Um, but yeah, they do this. As long you know what is going on here, I think that's fine. Um, but yeah, they, they, it basically takes complex things. And with these complex things, they uh, simplify them. So like the silhouettes are complex. The shape language is, is complex, but... The details are like uh, on purpose withheld at times, right? Um, that's what a lot of like shoujo manga guys do. They they know how to do really complex stuff. They're really good at it, but then they like remove some of the middles and you know details just to make it more three dimensional, which is a very smart practice in itself. There we go. This looks almost like a fountain pen. Not gonna lie, everyone has a different skill set. Uh, personally, I can mimic cursed images and whatever, and make something original. Portions and designs get wacky. Mm hmm. Understandable. Omni! Yeah, thank you, thank you. Welcome. Alright, so, bunch of stuff we went through. Now let's go to the more cursed thing. Let's go to the feet. Now, the feet are actually kind of simple shape wise. So, remember from previously the bones right the bones jet out so we have this part and then we have the feet which are basically glorified triangles so we have that and we have like this in the front now um i don't even know how to like explain this but right after the bone stops the, the big two bones here and they have the little bulging part uh right here the back fin starts Actually, no, they're, uh, they're segmented way more down. Hold up. Let me adjust that. The fin is actually already part of the back. There's this really weak part. I I think it's called Achilles heel. I'm not quite sure. But that part right here, and then the, the ball in the bottom starts. And you have the middle part, which these are the segmented bones. They're pushed inside <laughs> the body, by the way. 
well, most of the foot. These are the bones. They're, they're right here. They're one part. Now, you can't move them, sadly, anymore. This is almost like they're fused a bit. There's, like, no articulation here. But this is important to actually be able to stand. You can adjust your weight around on these parts. But you can't, like, do this sort of thing anymore with the foot. These are the toes. You can't do this, sadly. There's some people that have regained this ability I've seen in the past. But it's very freaky to ever see. Um, so yeah. Uh, imagine this as this, like, really big triangle of shape. There we go. Oh, Mike! Thank you for the sub, dude! Four months now, holy shit. All right, so I have this big triangle. If you really, really simplify it, it's just this and a triangle. There we go. The most simplified way you can do this. And then you go in and detail it, right? Um, remember everyone, big shapes first, details and little adjustments and whatever later. Okay, so we have this big thing. We're like, okay, we want to draw a foot. Then we segment it. Okay, this is like um, the toes, right? It's another triangle over here. Then we have the, the, the finger bones. They're here. So we have to jet it out a bit, right? We need some space. There we go. Also, a little thing, little important thing. Your foot is about as big as your upper arm, uh, your lower arm. So this is the shoulder, this is the upper arm, this is the lower arm, right? And then the hand. Your foot is as big as that, which is quite big. People have very big feet because, I mean, you got to balance all your weight on them, right? So, of course, they have to be big. Um, that's, that's like a whole thing people have to, like, remember, right? I think cute, small feet are, like, really nice in digital art. But in reality, if you do something realistic, which you don't have to, no one has to draw realism. But if someone does do realism, that's the size it is. Forearm? That's the forearm? Okay, then it's the forearm. Not the lower arm. It's a forearm. Apologies. English is not my first language. Oh, 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 oh. Do correct me if any of my terms are uh, incorrect, please. Happy birthday, Rebecca. Thank you, browser. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, around 20 o'clock, uh, I'm going to be uh, inviting uh, my dad and his uh, girlfriend to a nice dinner so that's gonna be fine uh, see, uh you see your mom rebecca invested in bitcoin with the total of savings she had to leave you in order to be able to buy even more bitcoin what the mom rebecca. i didn't invest in bitcoin <laughs> what okay back to this so now that we have that all let me push this onto actually no i'm gonna leave it who gives a shit Okay, now uh, we have this part, so it's a little curve. We have the heel, which this is a big bone. This is bone, right? Remember, I'm gonna pull up the diagram again. Where is it? Nope. Just, where did they put the diagram? Mm, nope, nope. Ah, here it is. You can see it here. There's this big fuck off bone in our heels. A big bone. That's a bump. Don't forget, that's a bump. Big bone. Uh, and then we have the, the, the big bone here. We can actually indicate that with like just two little lines. I like to do that a lot. Or just a little curve, you know, because that's... I would treat it more so like a little circle, a little sphere, so to say. Yo, Web Tam, welcome, dude. I know you did, Rebecca. You sold your soul to the blockchain and Elon Musk. There is no coming back. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. All right, now let's continue. There's also a little bit of a curve here because there's a lot missing, I guess. So it depends also on like what type of foot it is because there's actually different type of feet where they have uh, medical issues or the wrong footwear. That means that the shape of the foot is different depending on that. If you wear too small uh, of a shoe size, It'll be more squished, right? If there's something just... If people are born with different issues, there can be a flat foot, which um, you need to... If someone is born with that, they need orthopedic, like... I don't even know what that's called in English. I don't only know in German it's called orthopedic. Which is basically you 
have little little thingies in your shoes to like fix that. So the kind of bump here is important because if it's flat, it will affect your spine. Oh yeah, everything that happens with your feet will affect your spine. There's no way around that. The spine is always like balancing out everything that happens with the legs and the hip. So if the feet down there are doing something janky, the, the spine has to balance every little bit out. If it has to go to one side a lot, it will grind down the like little plates that are between the spines, the little soft cushions. And you can have a serious consequences. If someone has foot problems, they can have later in life really serious consequences with their spine. Just a little tip, I don't know. Uh, I'm just info dumping at this point. <laughs> but yeah, back to the art. Sorry, I'm getting way too much into the medical stuff. All right, so we got that, we got that little indicator. Um, let me make it transparent to make it a bit more easy. There we go. So don't forget there's like that and then that. And we have the bump, got the foot, got it going down and then we have the toes. That's the simplified way, but there's something really creepy about the toes in particular. Because they're pushed in, they actually have the bones go like a weird crooked upwards and everything in the front is actually sort of like a square at this point kind of like this and this is like the freaky part so this part right here is like this really sort of thin connecting part from below if you look at it from below and then you have this which is the the sort of not palm the toe part right the toes are segmented like that and it's if you realize it because it's like pushed in bones and stuff that's kind of freaky. Feet are fucking weird. Uh, happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I've been fine also. Happy birthday, Rebecca. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that's twice. <laughs> uh, feet are surprisingly complex. They are. They are. Um, that's what I realized when I did the feet study. So for those who don't know, I did the VTuber feet assets because I first wanted to just study feet because they are so complex, right? Um, and I was in a VC and I was trying to freak out my friends, not gonna lie, by just studying it in front of them. And then at some point I was like, what if I just make it a VTuber asset? Because there's several feet VTuber assets out there. I'm not the first one or the freakiest one out there, right? So I was just sort of looking at those and I was like, damn, what if I do that? I mean, I have a study here anyways, I could just whip it up. And let's just say I went too hard on the rendering, not gonna lie. But yeah, that's sort of how it came to be. And while doing the study, I, I realized these parts. That if you look at the foot from below or above, that it's just this sort of shape, right? Like there's the, the, the big fuck off bone right here. And you have the set in bones here. And then you have this these bones that just became its own thing. That just these squares. And the freakiest part is the pinky. The pinky has developed into what used to be like a square into a fucking triangle. That's because of shoes, guys, by the way. Because we started wearing shoes and binding our feet to protect them, or like just encase them in something, the pinky became this little nub. It's really important, actually, but it's so small and like weird looking at this point. I don't know how to describe that. And then we have like these little like connection parts, which is, this is just the tip of like the bone that's like set in. So this is like one, one thing here. And you know how I said at the start, you can like look at your hand when you like move it and see the bones peeking through your skin. The same thing can be done with the feet. If you really look for it, for like the, the, um, the bone parts of your foot, and move your foot, you can see the bones peeking through as well. It's freaky. Um, Rebecca, remind me to go to Germany just to go to your house and blow up your toilet. Legal. Uh, house made explosive. No, for making those feet assets. <laughs> Don't blow up my toilet. Um, those feet assets, they're, uh, they, I think they did their job. I think they did their job. It was made to freak people out. So, I'm not even gonna lie. If people keep posting them, I have no issue with that. Because again, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, so that means that when 
we are born with two left right feet it's the spine that actually gives you the problem of uh, not being able to walk run and dance properly yes yes if you had a more flexible super spine or something it would probably be able to um adjust for that but we just don't um so yeah i heard that humans can evolve to not have toes and it scares me there is a possibility for that yeah i mean look at hoofed animals hoofed animals used to have actual feet uh let me just grab okay um hooves okay hold up i'm looking for a medical uh, uh i'm looking for an x-ray medical uh, okay here we go here we go this is so freaky so this is a depiction uh over the development of how hoofs became to be right so you can see here that they used to have finger foot like um things right i don't even know what to describe it as i'm no uh, arch archaeologist what like the in-between stages are but this is really freaky so i don't know maybe the future humans will just have two hooves which is less likely because you have to balance on two hooves instead of feet which the balancing is way harder it's like being on stilts right now people can walk on stilts but then you would need a way more flexible spine or training i guess i don't know how that would work actually i'm no biologist uh imagine fleshy toeless feet like no that's full on uncanny valley um i don't know about that one may god give us the capacity to replace our feet with tank threads in order to step stop our feet craving needs <laughs> oh goodness oh goodness um it just needs to hold weight like elephants i mean elephants could work like elephant feet thingies but yeah th these are like the basics of feet and hands because they're so closely related to each other as you can see um and yeah that's that's really uh that's really it I hope you guys enjoyed this little deep dive into how to draw these sort of things and what it goes behind it. Uh, there's of course a lot of um, fats and stuff and uh, just muscles that also shape these body parts. But I will say I haven't seen too many like um, changes from the basic structure of these things. The another thing that you uh, that like could be really freaky is. When someone draws a foot as a hand or something in between, because there were some in between stages that you can see on monkeys, for example, where it's this and this is like the foot and there's like bone. Oh, this is freaky. So this would be a hand foot. Um, mm, monkey. Yeah, monkey. So if you look at monkey feet, quote unquote, it, it's more so like that. But it's important to like clamp onto branches and stuff so it makes sense right um the development of each uh animal slash being on this earth is made to fit their environment there is rarely any species that does it the other way around it's more so humans doing this so it's like oh it's too cold instead of over generations growing fur we just have a heater you know 